Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. With this flexible ruler representing the surface of the Earth, we are going to disprove the ridiculous notion that the heliocentric model and the spinning globe best fit reality. You'll often hear people argue that the heliocentric model is the best at making predictions uh, and uh, it fits with the observations and measurements that we can make on the Earth. But we're going to do two things in this uh, very simple demonstration that completely disprove that and show that uh, it is perspective of our subjective observations that are converted into an illusionary objective reality to have us believe that we live on a globe and we are going to debunk or disprove that the Eratosthenes experiment somehow proves the circumference of us being on a globe earth and in fact uh, it doesn't fit with reality at all. So just uh, use your imagination to have this ruler representing the surface of the earth and the distance between these matchsticks can be uh, whatever you like. It can be a mile, ten miles, a hundred miles, a thousand miles. It's really up to you. And the matchsticks can represent lamp posts, or the match heads can be um, the sun or moon or stars in the sky traveling off into the distance or above the surface of the earth. And we'll see how perspective is converted into an imaginary curve and that's simply by uh, uh, keeping in mind that this kind of view, this side-on orthographic view is what you might call an objective view. We do not really have this kind of view of the earth unless we are looking at something very distant like a, a mountain range or it could be uh, windmills or it could be the pylons across Lake Pontchartrain if you like often used as some kind of proof that we live on a spherical planet but of course we are never really given this kind of view it's almost impossible to fit this kind of view into a camera so you have to get really far away in order to see it uh, but the view that we usually have is more like this and we can see here how perspective comes into play. Now I've got the uh, ruler level, as level as I can make it, and of course you can see that uh, what we get is this uh, result of perspective where you have the surface closest to us uh, in the lower corner of the view, and this surface over here, uh, or this end of the surface over here, rising up to the camera's eye level and we also get this kind of uh, declination of the tops of the matchsticks simply due to perspective and angular size yeah so I'll, I'll keep it I'll try and keep it horizontal yeah and it's it's when we get this angle like this that we see what appears to be uh, things sinking off into the distance but that is then given to us in this side-on view and the declination or the uh, inclination of the surface that we see in this view is then converted into a curve on the surface. It's as simple as that, yeah? This view where we are looking horizontally across the surface and we see this inclination and declination is then converted into a curved surface to give us that same inclination and declination but the reality is that the surface actually remains flat so we have perspective being converted into this imaginary curve you see it's really very simple and we've got to keep in mind that any observation that we make as far as angles and distances don't change this this ruler is um, 
however long it is, uh, doesn't change if we bend it or keep it flat. The distance between the, uh, the matchsticks doesn't change, but uh, it's all a matter of interpretation when we convert what we see in our subjective reality into this imaginary objective reality and then we have to curve the surface to make that inclination or declination that we see from perspective and convert it into an imaginary curve. It's very simple. Again, the measurements or the angles do not change. You see, in this kind of view, we have angles. In this kind of view, we have no angles. So the angles are put in by giving the surface a curve, a curve that simply doesn't exist. Of course, in illustrations of the globe, we might be told to imagine that we are an observer here, for example, and of course what will happen is we, we, we then believe that we are looking into some kind of bulge of curvature, when the reality is that all we're doing is looking across a flat surface with a horizontal line of sight, and that surface appears to rise to eye level. Yeah? It's a simple conversion. Perspective becomes an imaginary curve. So what we have here now is a miniature version of the Eratosthenes experiment. So again, we've got the curved surface of the Earth. And I've got this paper under it just so we can see the shadows more clearly in line with the curve. And when we shine a light on it, this is the kind of effect we get. We get uh, shadows that uh, do change in length and angle on this curved surface. Uh, but of course, the heliocentric model has us with a very, very distant sun. So if I make that sun more distant and bring the shadows out, you can see that what actually happens is that the, the shadows do become more parallel and they become about the same length, which is not what we see in reality. What we see in reality is a close sun creating shadows of differing lengths. Yeah, You can see that as I take the light source away, as is with the heliocentric model, then the shadows become the same length all across the Earth. That shouldn't happen. And if this light source was much, much bigger, we simply wouldn't get clearly defined shadows across the surface because the light would be shining down all over the surface. So to actually have shadows with a distant and massive sun on a curved Earth simply isn't possible. Yeah? So that in itself debunks the Eratosthenes experiment and the idea that um, the results somehow prove that we live on a curved Earth because otherwise we'd, uh, we'd have either no shadows with a massive light source or we'd have shadows that are always an equal length the further away the sun is. So let's just put this uh, down on the... I'll take this away now, we won't need it. Let's just make a, a flat Earth Eratosthenes experiment and we can see here that we get exactly what we need to get and something that fits with our observations with a local sun uh, above this point here we have no shadow and we have those shadows getting longer and longer the further away they get from uh, the light source like if I bring the light source over here we can see that these shadows and this one's a short shadow these shadows get longer and longer as they get more distant and we can actually keep the light at a, the same distance above the surface and as we take it further away then those shadows just get longer and longer yeah so this again fits with our reality if you ever watch sunsets watch the shadows at sunset you'll see that they just get longer and longer until they fade into obscurity because the light isn't reaching them any longer so again a local sun on a flat surface with uh, angle, uh, shadows of varying 
lengths and angles completely fits with the flat earth okay and it doesn't work on a curved surface with a distant and massive sun now what I can try to do here is just as a practical demonstration just lift this up slightly is if we use this as us if we use the matchsticks to represent the angles at which we might observe the sun okay these these angles are going to get sharper and sharper as they get off into the distance okay so basically what we're doing here is we are imagining we're looking at this this light so the angle on the surface of the earth towards the light is like this again this reflects what we can observe in reality but of course what we're given with the illustrations of the globe is uh, parallel lines of light so again remember that these matchsticks now represent uh, parallel uh, represent the rays of light so what's done of course is uh, to have those parallel rays of light we are then given a curved surface and those angles then become straight lines no this isn't of course people will laugh at this and say oh there's no precise measurements it's not supposed to be you can see for yourself that the angles that we would get on a flat surface are then turned into parallel lines when we are given a curved surface so it really is just a matter of uh, converting our subjective reality into an objective reality again an objective reality that we don't see we don't see parallel rays of light coming in we see rays of light coming in like this just as we saw with the shadows so I hope that helps illustrate the difference between a flat and a curved surface and show you that really the Eratosthenes experiment and other such measurements or calculations for a model uh, don't change anything. Nothing changes about the observations that we make. It is all down to how our subjective reality is converted into an imaginary objective reality. Thank you very much.